All right, so today I wanna to talk to you about something a little bit different and very, very important, and that is Cheaper by the Dozen 3. Now, no, you didn't miss out on something incredibly important and incredibly big that has happened in history. They only made two Cheaper by the Dozens, and that is the one in 2003 and the one in 2005. I am talking about the new Cheaper by the Dozen 3, which I have the idea for, and I might write or have somebody else write it for me. I don't work in Hollywood, I really don't know how that works. But it's an amazing idea, and here it is. Now, a little backstory first. I myself was a massive Cheap by the Dozen fan when I was younger. The first one came out in 2003 on, oh shit, look at that, came out on Christmas, 2003. Another one came out on Christmas? No, that's kind of lame. The second one came out on the 21st. They really should have kept with that. That would have been great. Anyway, back to the point. It came out in 2003 in December, which would have made me nine years old. Just a, just a little thing. And the next one would have been 11. And now the thing about that time was that I didn't have internet, and I didn't have cable, and I was a kid, and I was too young to go run around the neighborhood all hours of the day far away. So what few movies my mom and I did have growing up, I'd watch those. We had like just a stack of movies that we'd get out of like the $5 bin at Walmart or something, and I'd run through those. So I watched Cheaper the Dozen 1, Cheaper the Dozen 2, maybe, I don't know, I'd say probably about 100 times a piece in my life, most of them in a two year span couple times since then, just for nostalgia purposes. Now, if you haven't heard anything about the Cheap by the Dozen movies, and you ha especially if you haven't seen them, don't watch this, actually no, please watch this video, I will accept any views. But if you haven't, you need to watch those movies, they're amazing. Now, Cheap by the Dozen 1 and 2 follow the Baker family. Now, the Baker family are basically, well, the Baker parents are basically rabbits. So, uh, is, is Jake your only child? Uh, no, we have 12. I couldn't keep her off me. <laughs> 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 they have 12 children, and I think they're in their late 40s, early 50s. Basically, they can't keep them, their hands off themselves. I mean, but can you, can you really blame the, the wife? I mean, she's married to Steve Martin. Look at that man. He's practically a god. The first movie is about them moving to a different city because um, the dad, what's his name? Tom? Yeah because the dad, Tom Baker, gets a job as a coach at a college, so they need to relocate. Shortly after they relocate, when the kids are already all up in arms about having to move and leaving all their friends and everything, the mom gets a book deal, has to go on a book tour, and the dad is stuck there taking care of all the children by himself. Fast forward to the second movie, and this is basically like a vacation movie. Like, the Bakers are taking a vacation to a lakeside, They're having a great time until Tom uh, Baker runs into his old nemesis, the Murtaugh family. <laughs> Ouch. This guy is so competitive! Which, the youngest son is Elliot Murtaugh, played by Taylor Lautner, who dates the youngest daughter of the Baker clan. Now that's important to remember for my movie, so keep that in your head. But anyway, the first movie had a budget of $40 million, and it made $190 million box office. The second one had a budget of $60 million and made $135 million at the box office. Less, but still, still quite a bit. This begs the question why they didn't make another one, and it also answers my question, can I get this made? Answer, yes, because Hollywood is money hungry, and so am I. We're a perfect match, please contact me, whoever makes these movies. Now that you have a backstory of these movies and my love for the movies, I'm going to read you this. Now, the reason I was reminded of this is a Facebook memory. Five years ago, I posted on Facebook uh, about this movie idea for Cheap by Dozen 3 that's been swimming around in my head since I was like 17 years old. And I saw it on Facebook and I was like, I got a YouTube channel now, I gotta get this out here. I'm just gonna read you verbatim what I have written down, okay? <clears throat> All right, I'm not the strongest reader, so bear with me. For years, all the kids joked around about forming a criminal team of the 12 of them because they all have a certain skill that would help. 12 years after the events of Cheap by the Dozen 2, the parents die in a car crash. The kids, who have all gone their own ways over the years, all come together for the memorial and get very drunk reminiscing. On a whim, they rob a low-level bank and a couple stores and realize they are quite good at this. Hey, bud. Fast forward three years to present day, and they have become the most wanted criminal team in the world known as the Dirty Dozen. Now, I know that is already a name for something, but we're gonna get filthy stinking rich off this. So we'll, we'll buy the rights to the Dirty Dozen, that's okay. Then, on one job, the oldest boy of the 12, Charlie, is mortally wounded. Sarah, who has become a doctor, tends to him, yet sadly he dies and she blames herself and flees to another country. 
the Dirty Dozen breaks up. Fast forward one more year to the anniversary of their parents' deaths, and they all get together again for the first time in a year and decide to do one more job. Elliot Murtaugh, that's why I said it's important to remember Elliot Murtaugh. Cat, what are you doing? You're in the shot. This is making it look very unprofessional. Thank you. Anyway, Elliot Murtaugh, who is Sarah's husband, agrees to take Charlie's place as point man. Obviously, I won't spoil the ending. That's because I don't really have an ending yet. I just have the setup. I don't really know what's going to happen after that. But come on! That's amazing! A rated R, cheap by the dozen, 15... Well, it's not going to happen in 2020, because obvious reasons. But a rated R, cheap by the dozen, 16, 17, 18 years, whatever, after the last one? That's amazing! It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> and look, come on, let, let's let's see what everybody's doing. I bet you people are available. All right, so I'm on the cheap by the dozen IMDb page, which by the way, has a 5.9 on IMDb. I don't respect you anymore, IMDb. You don't know how to rate shit. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, what do people have going on in their life? Steve Martin has not done shit since 2016 as far as acting goes. He writes every now and then. He's done a couple appearances on SNL and he's narrated a short film. So he's free, he's young, he's spunky, he's still got it going on. I saw that thing with him and Martin Short, he was bouncing around that stage. He's fine, he's in. Steve Martin's in. Bonnie Hunt, also good. She just appears to be doing something called the Bonnie Hunt Show. She's got plenty of time, that's her own show. She can just tell him, hey, I got more important things to do, I'll be back for filming when I'm back. Piper Barabo, which plays the oldest daughter. She's not doing anything that I recognize, so she's free. I don't know what you're doing. Must be boring. You're coming to my movie. Don't worry, I'm not gonna look at everybody. I assume that the younger kids haven't done anything that is anywhere near as cool as Cheap by the Dozen. I'm just gonna look at the older actors. Next up is Tom Welling. You probably know him uh, from Smallville. That's the show where one of the main characters run a sex ring outside of the show. Very good show. Um, I don't know about the sex ring. Probably not. Probably not a good sex ring. Wouldn't recommend that one. Anyway, uh, he has not been doing much. He's done Lucifer. My wife says that's a good show. Uh, Batwoman. Uh, he's all, well, he's playing Clark Kent in that. Hey, looks like, looks like he can't get a role outside of Smallville where he's playing Clark Kent. He's being typecast. What better thing to avoid typecasting than going back to the character you played in 2003 and 2005? Tom Welling is in. Next up is Hilary Duff. I've never even heard of her. Wait a minute. Who are you? Uh, I don't even know how she was in Shoot by the Dozen, having virtually no resume. So she's in. She's got nothing going on. Who even is she? Next up is Kevin Schmidt. He hasn't done anything since 2018. Kevin, you're in. You're in my fucking movie. Congratulations. Now, the last two, and I would say arguably the most important two. In my vision, Alison Stoner and Taylor Lautner are the main focus of this movie. I think they have a lot of potential, and I think it has gone untapped until this point. Alison Stoner has done a lot of uh, dance movies. She's a spectacular dancer. She has not done a whole lot as of late. Actually, hold the fucking phone. She's in a lot of TV series. Um, good for you, Alison Stoner. But she's gonna wanna put those on hold to be in this, and I'll tell you why. Because it's gonna be good. Now, they are the main focus. I don't know how yet, but they are. Taylor Lautner, who Gets a lot of hate for Twilight, but I think he's fantastic. Jacob, the least horrible person in all of those movies. I didn't hate him. I, I did hate him a little bit, but I hated him less than everybody else. He hasn't done anything either since 2018. What's going on, Taylor? Looks like you need a cheap by a dozen three. You're welcome. I don't really know how to get this done. I don't know if it ever will get done, but this has been in my goddamn head for years now. Years. So, hopefully, now, it is in your head. Congratulations. Hopefully this never leaves your head. And I now have this on recording. Uh, I have I have a post on Facebook. If you try and steal my idea, I will sue you. Thank you and goodbye, I guess. Oh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other videos.